Good afternoon. This weekend we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Tonight is our celebration of the first Sunday of Lent. And for those who are visiting, um, if you prefer to receive communion on the tongue, please go to the end of Father Chris's communion line or for anybody um, who would like to do that. Also, we ask that you remember to social distance as we've been for so long. Um, I'm sharing the announcement with you tonight instead of Teresa because we have an exciting p piece of news to share with everyone. Um, Bishop Powers has issued up updated guidelines which loosen some restrictions as we celebrate together. The faithful are permitted to sing with masks on and with respect for those in close proximity to you. Those parts that are typically sung in dialogue or congregationally. So that would mean um, the responsorial psalm the gospel acclamation, and at this time, the amen. If Father chooses to chant the doxology, we will chant the single-toned amen after he chants the doxology. Um, for now, we'll continue to recite the holy and the mystery of faith, uh, and, and we will not be providing hymnals. So I'm giving you this announcement because just this afternoon, I took the time to download an app on my phone uh, Breaking Bread, which is our resource that we use um, through OCP, uh, offers now an app. And you can download that to your phone for $4.99. It's $4.99. And you can have your own Breaking Bread missile. And I tell you, it's really simple because when you bring up the, the, the app, it gives you the day you're celebrating and the whole form of the Mass, just as if it was in your Breaking Bread book. And then you can go so far as to put the songs in that we're going to sing, and you can join us in all those hymns. And we'll do our best to try to do familiar music from here on in, as we've been doing less familiar music to discourage singing, um, but now the tables are turning and, and, and we see light at the end of the tunnel. So please enjoy singing with us tonight what you're able. Um, and if you have your phone and you have that app, um, go ahead and bring, open it up and join us with the readings fully in the liturgy. Thank you. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody. It's great to see that smile on Holly's face, too, as she says people could start singing again, too. <laughs> 
things do continue to change and to grow within the church and even in our lives. Part of the Lenten season, isn't it? How we focus more intently on fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. The way in which God works in our lives and the way in which his spirit leads us because we've all been given that gift of the spirit in our baptism. As we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you overcame temptation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you gave your life for your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, see, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were there with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving you for all ages to come of the covenant between you and me and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living things so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism which saves you now is not a removal of dirt from your body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Actually, I'm going to do two things today. One of them, I'll, I'll give a short homily, and then I'm going to just give some catching up on some of the things that are, that are taking place, because it seems like there's so much that is happening now. But first off, with the, with the homily, and to see the gift of baptism, we recognize it in that letter from Peter, isn't it? Notice even with our readings this weekend, starting off the first weekend of Lent, they all speak about baptism, or they're all associated with baptism. Peter is speaking about it, and how it is not on the outside. It doesn't wash the dirt off of us. It's what happens in the inside. How Christ has come to free those captives. Christ entered into those waters, and it was because of his grace through the sacrifice of the cross that he would give, that grace is poured out to us and how we enter into that mystery and how those graces continually come to us. We see in the first reading from Genesis with Noah, how he's on the ark, he's disembarking, excuse me. <coughs> he's disembarking from the ark with his family with him and his three sons and all the wives, all the animals. Notice they're all coming out in harmony together. Noah has gone out in those 40 days. There's been the flood, all the chaos and all the distortion, the distractions, the divisions, everything else that has gone on because of that flood that had taken place. Now Jesus himself is down in the Jordan River, and he's come out of the Jordan River. Still in that first chapter of Matthew, aren't we? Jesus comes out of the water and is led by the Spirit, that same Spirit that descended down upon him. And he's pushed out into the desert to go out to meet Satan. And then he goes out, as it says, um, Proclaiming the gospel of God, the good news. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It's fulfilled. Each and every one of us, hopefully everyone here, has received the grace of baptism, the gift of baptism. That gift of the Spirit that comes into our lives to see how God works in our lives. And to grow in that understanding, wisdom, knowledge, fortitude, perseverance, and all the gifts of the Spirit that we receive at confirmation. How we're fed upon Christ actually, literally. And how he strengthens us, nurtures us, gives us that food. It's interesting seeing that, isn't it? Because this, as we begin this season of uh, Lent, we're also recognizing those that are, are coming into the church, how we're growing in our understanding of it, and how we're, others are coming into the church to learn about the church and to see its graces. But we need the gift of, 
of, uh, to recognize that graces that have been given to us and how we grew in it. That's why we have fasting, prayer, and abs uh, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Prayer, because it sets us in that right relationship with God. But we have to walk in it. We have to pray. <laughs> Is there one particular way? No, there's many different ways. Some people say, I don't know how to pray. Do it. <laughs> Just do it. You'll discover what is the best way for you to pray. There are many different ways of prayer. Some people pray their rosary. Other people are meditative prayer. Some people like praying the Psalms. Those who sing pray twice. Because they enter into it with their lives, their vocal bot, their chords. They're praying to Christ, singing to Christ. Seeing the graces that come about. Prayer, fasting. What does fasting do? It stirs things up within us, doesn't it? Because we're holding back from ourselves part of those desires, those pleasures that we have. And things come to the surface. We recognize it. It kind of sets us off a bit. But it's to take notice of that. Because then it also helps us to see where our relationship is with God and with other people as we fast and we abstain from things. Many things that we can fast and abstain from. How many people need to abstain from technology not these days? From the comments that are on the internet and the way in which we let those comments bring us down. How many people need to give alms? Monetarily. But what about our time? About the way in which people need our help. Those that are in need. Many different ways in which we can give alms to people. Give that extra time to people. Because other people need to see it. They need to see that life of Christ working in their lives. That's what a covenant is. A covenant is an exchange between persons. People are up here married. I married about five people in the church this year, or five couples. The change of couple, the change of persons between the two people. But it's not just between them, it's between them and God also. It's a relation that goes in there. I am giving myself for this other person that other person is giving it for that person. But God does that also. It's this change of personhoods, that relationship that is there, that is called to grow and be nurtured and be strengthened. That's what our candidates and our catechumens will be doing, isn't it? Growing in that understanding of it. Tomorrow we'll have the right ascending for the uh, catechumens who will be involved in the rite ascending, they're going up to the cathedral to meet the bishop. They will be receiving into the, all those sacraments of initiation, baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation. We need to continue to pray for them. We'll also be recognizing the, the candidates who will be welcomed into the church and will be confirmed in the faith because they've studied and they've learned the basics of the faith. But it never ends, does it? That's why we go through all the seasons throughout the liturgical year, growing in that understanding of who our God is and how our relationship is with him and with everything he created. Brings us right back to Noah, doesn't it? And what went wrong? and how God is continually trying to set things right. But he does it through us. And the more we can recognize how he does it through us, the more we can grow in that understanding of that love that he has for us and how we bring it out to other people. So we'll be going through the scrutinies also this year. They'll be taking place on the third, fourth, and fifth Sundays of Lent, 
So we'll be using the readings from the fir, uh, from the letter uh, from year A. One of the other things that we'll be doing this year too, and coming up in a couple weeks, we'll be electing two people to the parish council uh, as new members. It'll take place on the weekend of the sixth and the seventh to see the way in which Christ's church continually goes out to people and to gain a fuller understanding of what the church is. Because we're associated with the church up in Superior, with our bishop. We're a hub off of that church. Our church is the church of Superior. We're a hub off of that church. And to see the way we're in communion with our bishop and with the bishops around our nation and around the world, and of course, our Holy Father. One of the last things is, not one of the last things, I don't know how many people know about Bishop Aaron. Bishop Aaron has got a, he's probably one of the, he is a leading evangelist in the United States today. He's out in California now. He has a, a the Word on Fire organization, and Brandon Voigt, Voigt is one of the directors in it, if I remember right. He came out with a new book. It's called Return. How to Draw Your Child Back to the Church. It's a great book. The last several years, I've been, we've been hearing about all the different stats that are happening within the church, how people are leaving the church, especially our youth. How is it, is it that we can draw them back into the church? The neat thing about this book so far, I'm only through about the first three chapters. I've, that's all I've been able to get through so far. It's well put together. He's got all the stats. And he's got comments from all, a lot of the uh, young adults on what it is and how, how, why it is that they're stepping out of the church. They're not falling away from the church. They still recognize themselves as Catholic, even if they're calling themselves agnostic. They want to know what's going on. They want to know the truth. Of course, Christ is the truth. Brandon Voigt gives us a, a, a pathway into that. If you'd like a copy of it, it's a great book, and I'm sure it's going to be great all the way through it. I've got some copies over in the office. Ask Patty for a copy of it. They're free. And I'm sure if we run low, I'll order more of them. But what a great grace and what a great gift it is to see all the different things that are happening within the church now. We have Mike Schmidt that's really going through a year through the Bible. Number one podcast. I've got a sister that's Lutheran. She told me about it the other day when I was talking to her, asking me if I knew about him. I said, yeah, I know who he is. All these different ways and seeing the different ways in which God is working and reaching out to people. How is he reaching out to us? How are we entering into that relationship with him and growing in that relationship? Because he's given us more means, more ways of growing in that relationship than there ever has been before. And they're a lot easier to access now even because of a pandemic. Interesting, isn't it? How God's graces work through, even through a pandemic, so that he can come to us so much easier and bring that life to him. Of course, the evil one is always working too, isn't he? That's the other message I have. Somebody is using my name and texting people. If you have doubts about it, call the office. My number is a Milwaukee number. It starts with a Milwaukee number. I'll start with, tell you that. So it's a 414. It wouldn't be another text. And most of the time, if I'm texting people, I'm not going to be asking for things. 
or it's not going to be like an emergency to call, sit there and leave a message for you. That's what I, the way I usually tend to do it. So be careful with the way in which people are responding. If you ever have any questions about any emails or texts, call the office. It's the easiest thing to do. And you can talk to either Patty or myself, and we'll give you that information, okay? And have a great Lenten season. God's graces are pouring out. I see it in so many different ways. And Christ will continue to work in our lives. And he continues to grow that church and expand it, especially as we enter into that relationship with him and the way in which he pours it out to us. Let's rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Approaching the throne of our Heavenly Father, let us offer our prayers for the church and the world. For the church, may the Lord guide and protect her in proclaiming the kingdom of God to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in state and local governments, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in working to protect the most vulnerable, especially the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened to the point of despair, may God's grace pour it out upon them, strengthen and uphold them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our catechists, candidates, and their sponsors on their journey to the Easter sacraments, may they grow in their experience with support from our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we would help build the church in 
African American and Native American communities through generous support of the Black and Indian Mission Collection today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly, in prayer and fasting, be drawn ever more deeply into the Paschal Mystery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they soon rejoice with all the angels and saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Gloria Dutton, who we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause to add your own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in our vocation prayer. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes souls needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear our prayers, O God, our Father, as we turn to you, the source of all goodness. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Benedict and St. Basil, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under a man, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Lord, into the desert, lead us through the wilderness. Through this journey we will follow, for we long to see your face. In this time of sacred struggle, in this time. 
Prayer for spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Uh, just uh, one other note. Uh, there will be no mass on Tuesday, uh, the 23rd. Also no confessions that day. Uh, I'm gonna be up in Hayward for a Presbyterian Council meeting that day. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.